Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Nurse Reviews Cells at Work Code Black. Today we're looking at episode number 11 called Desperation, Gout, and Rebellion. So we ended off last episode on a really, really depressing and dark note and I have been forewarned by some of you guys that this episode is really not a whole heck of a lot different. So, um, we're just gonna go straight ahead to, uh, the beer today. Um, please drink responsibly and if you're underage in your area, please do not drink at all. Um, but yeah, for me, I am well, well, uh, of age. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pop this open and let's dive in to this episode. あ、<laughs> so because of the episode title, we already know what this is. So we know this is gout and this is likely a uric acid crystal because it doesn't really look like a bacteria to me, but it definitely looks like a crystal. So I'm going to go with uric acid crystal. Let's keep going and find out.後方支援部隊も展開しろ。第一戦闘配備、全軍左足親指に結集。第一戦闘配備、完了。第一戦闘配備、完了しました。総攻撃開始。撃て。All right, so what we are seeing here is obviously an inflammatory response. So our white blood cells have recognized a foreign substance, and this is, in this case, the uric acid crystal. Of course, it's not a bacteria, so there's nothing they can really do about it, but they are still attacking it as if it is a pathogen. So this ends up being like this huge destructive response due to the high amounts of inflammation that they're causing. But unfortunately, as he said, don't worry about the collateral damage. Um, unfortunately for the host body, that collateral damage ends up being a lot of redness and swelling and heat and extreme amounts of pain. そうだ、あんたでしょ。あの子の同期の優等生って。あの子よく話してたの。あんたのこと。自慢のお友達みたいでね。仕事辛くて逃げ出したくなった時は、あいつのことを思い出すようにしてるんですよ。今頃バカ
脾臓は血液を貯蔵し必要時に筋肉に送り出す役割のほか B リンパ球や T リンパ球を成熟させたり脊髄髄によって仕分けされた赤血球を破壊する機能を持つ。All right, so we are in the spleen, and um, yeah,、um, they pretty much explained it. So, there's two different parts of the spleen essentially is the red pulp and the white pulp. And it's the red pulp that is responsible for sort of filtering all our red blood cells. So, the average lifespan for a red blood cell is only about 120 days. So, this is just a natural part of their life cycle. They go through the spleen and they're filtered out, and they're actually、um, taken out by the macrophages. They don't really show that here, but they did actually have a really cute joke in, I think it was the first episode of the Main Cells at Work series, where the red blood cell gets lost and she accidentally turns into the spleen and she goes into a room full of macrophages that are wondering what she's doing there, and she gets terrified and runs away. So that's the reason why that was the joke, if in case you missed it. The first time around.、Um, but yeah, this is actually kind of an interesting depiction of how the red cells are just sort of filtering in and through the spleen. The spleen actually does have these capillaries that have these kind of like slits or narrow openings that the red blood cells kind of have to squeeze their way through in order to make it through the red pulp in order to be processed. So I think that's what they're alluding to with these sort of like gates. That they're going through one by one. The spleen's other role has to do with the white pulp, and that has to do with more with your immune system, like producing antibodies and lymphocytes and things like that.、Um, but yeah, I guess right now we're just looking at the red pulp. That being said, it is a very vascular organ, and technically, technically, you can live without your spleen. I actually know somebody who lost her spleen to a traumatic accident,、um, and she actually almost bled to death because it's such a vascular organ and she lost a lot of blood from it. But she's doing just fine now, but there are some things that she has to take into consideration. So, for example, her immune response is definitely going to be compromised because she no longer has that spleen with the white pulp. They've also shown that people who no longer have their spleens also show a higher amount of abnormal red blood cells because, of course, the spleen is no longer there to filter them out. Nyong san, Shokumo Tseshu ya Taisha niori, Tainai ni Seisei Sareru, Energy Bushit de Aru, Printai ga Bunkai Sareru Sai ni Umareru, Haiki Buts. Tokuni, Kashi ya Tesaki nado, Taion no Hikui Mattambu de wa Ketchu ni Toke Zrak, Chikseki Sareyasi. All right, so uric acid. So we were right. That crystal was a uric acid crystal. And uric acid is just a byproduct of metabolism of various things like food. They did not mention actually that one of the highest risk factors for gout is actually a high consumption of alcohol. Because again, one of the waste products is just like uric acid. <laughs>、um, other risk factors or other dietary risk factors in any case are high consumptions of things like red meat and certain seafoods. There's also this theory that trauma also exacerbates gout. So, one of the theories as to why gout tends to happen in the toes is because you're basically constantly traumatizing your toes just by walking on them and exposing them to that much shear and stress. The other theory is, like we said here, that they believe that temperature has a role with it. So, in extremities like your fingers and toes, the temperature is naturally lower than in your core of the body. So, In those lower temperatures, the uric acid just tends to crystallize a lot easier instead of just staying dissolved in the blood. Some people are also just more genetically predisposed to gout and the formation of uric acid crystals.、Uh, so, yeah,、um, sucks. <laughs> Age also plays a part. So, it is really unusual for gout to show up in people younger than 30 years old. Clearly, though, based on what we've seen from this body, it's just they're not, they're not a young spring chicken. I, I would guess that this person is definitely a working adult, probably a bit more of an older working adult, so probably like 50s, based on the fact,、uh, based on how the cells have been just like talking about the body in previous episodes. I almost forgot this one, but as a last point, one of the other risk factors to gout is actually a decreased、um, kidney function. And that's because normally all this uric acid is processed and eliminated by your kidneys. 
Now, I don't know exactly how badly the kidney function is on this person person since that like um kidney stone episode but yeah if the kidneys are being affected in some way or another then they won't be able to filter out that uric acid and um, expel it through the urine as normal so as a result the uric acid just like builds up in the body and has a higher likelihood of crystallizing somewhere like the big toe <laughs> ケッカン内の老廃物である尿酸が結晶化それを白血球が攻撃し炎症が起こることで激しい痛みが誘発される病気吹いた風が当たるだけで痛いことから痛風と呼ばれるようになったと言われるそれじゃあ私たちはこの
In any case, that concludes our episode for today. So I guess this is just a relatively short video. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> That's gosh, she's like crying right down there. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the end of this episode and we are reaching the final two episodes finally. Now I am going to be moving sometime next month. So <laughs> it's going to be a little bit busy, but I think my goal is to finish reviewing the Cells at Work Code Black series before I make the official move. Hopefully I can accomplish this. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys enjoyed and I shall see you all in the next episode and hopefully by then I can find my yukata because I am absolutely boiling right now. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, finish off my beer and take all this off and uh, yeah, have yourselves a great day guys. Bye!